Good evening. Good evening. And the Lord be with you. And it's not raining. What a wonderful Wednesday evening that we have. The sun's still out even. A few announcements as we begin our worship tonight. Um, reminder that we have one more Wednesday evening service. And then after that, it'll be Holy Week. And we'll have Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday services that week. Uh, we do have a new member Sunday coming up on Palm Sunday, March the 24th. Uh, so please plan to stay after worship for that. Uh, if you have an Easter lily order that you'd like to place, the insert is in the bulletin tonight. Uh, please just put that in the check in the offering plate. Uh, you have until Palm Sunday, I believe it is, to order those. Uh, and the Easter sign-up sheet is on the, the Easter breakfast sign-up sheet is on the bulletin board out in the hallway of the Narthex. Uh, so if you're going to be with us for the Easter breakfast, if you can provide some of the food, we would certainly appreciate that if you could sign up. Anything else we need to share tonight? If not, as we move into worship, we're continuing with our theme of promised treasures. And the treasure we're thinking about tonight is that of bread, the sustenance that God gives to us. But even beyond that thinking of Jesus, when he says, I am the bread of life. And the sustenance that he gives us, not just for this life, but for life eternal. With that in mind, let's stand and sing our opening hymn. Jesus to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his stripes we are healed. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is the Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, search our hearts and minds, that we may receive your word, share in your spirit, 
and be renewed in our relationships with you and with one another. With humble hearts, let us pray together. Lord Jesus, the Father's only Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, hear us as we pray. We confess that we have not lived our lives as we ought, forgetting that you have called us to be the salt of the earth. Our rebellion against you in thought, word, and action is why you died for us. To forgive our sins, to redeem our lives, and to cancel the debt we owe to God. To hearts that are humble and lives that are grateful, help us to receive your grace, bow before you in worship, and confess that you alone are Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, shows his mercy to us in the sending of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, the true bread from heaven, who satisfies the hunger of our souls. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you reveal yourself as the bread of life who satisfies all the hungry souls that return to you in repentance and faith. Renew our hearts and minds through this sanctity as we receive the promise and treasures of your word. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading is from Exodus, the 16th chapter. 
And the whole congregation of the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the people of Israel said to them, Would that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the meat pots and ate bread to the full. For he have brought us into this wilderness to kill us, kill us all the sun we were hungry. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I am with I am about to rain bread from heaven for you. And the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day, that I may test them, whether they will walk in my law or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare for what they bring in, will be twice as much as they gather daily. And the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the people of Israel. Say to them, At twilight you shall have meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread, and you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quail came up and covered the camp, and in the morning, dew lay around the camp. And when the dew had gone up, there was a face on, on the wilderness, and a fine flake like thing, fine as frost on the ground. When the people of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, It is the bread from the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Gather of it, each one of you, as much as you can eat. You shall take, you shall each take an omer according to the number of the persons that each of you has seen in his tent. And the people of Israel did so. They gathered some more, some less. But when they measured it with, with an omer, whoever gathered much had nothing left over, and whoever gathered little had no lack. Each of them gathered as much as he could eat. O Lord, have mercy on us. God. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring the breath. The just decrees of the Lord are true. And all More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey, and drinkings of the honeycomb. That the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in the sight of the Lord, my God and my Redeemer. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And as all well as beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. I want you to know, brothers, that our fathers were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. I speak as to sensible people, judging for yourselves what I say. A cup of blessing that we bless, is it not participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we are, we are many, are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Return to the Lord your God, for he is precious and merciful. Slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus then said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me, and yet you do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never cast out. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
peace be to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for tonight's message comes from the multitude of readings that we had tonight, primarily from the Old Testament and from the Gospel. Um, but I share with you these words. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Brothers and sisters in Christ, bread is one of those staples. We all complain about the price of bread now. I think we were complaining about the price of bread when it hit a dollar or two. Um, and I think the ones that you see in the store now are more like four or five if you want um, a better bread of any kind. Um, but it's one of those things that you have to have to sustain life. Our Old Testament reading tonight, I always love hearing what Israel had to say as God led them out from Egypt, complaining, of course, that they were having to make these bricks without straw and that they were slaves and that life was so terrible and difficult. Lord, save us. And God saves them and sends Moses there to lead them out. And almost as soon as they come out of Egypt, they start to grumble and complain against Moses and Aaron and Certainly, it's against God. Why did you lead us out here just so we would die in the wilderness? And almost as soon as they had left, they're remembering the glory days back in Egypt, where they were slaves, where they were complaining about making those bricks and the work that they had to do. But, oh, there were pots that were full of meat and life was good. Oh, we should have just died back there. Not out here in this wilderness. We need something to eat. Moses. We need something to eat. And God tells Moses. Something great is about to happen. I'm going to rain bread down from heaven. On the people. Now in, in Sunday school we all learned about the manna. And we've always talked about the manna that God provided. And, you know, as kids, we all learned that it's, it's bread that God provided. They went out and they collected up in the morning. But what I didn't know until I got to the seminary and took Hebrew was that the word manna is actually a question. Uh, it's not a statement of what this is. It's a question of what is it? That's what it literally means, mana. It's what everyone was saying when they came out of their tents that morning. They're looking around and there's this flake-like stuff all over the place. Mana, what is it? It's bread from heaven that God has provided to sustain his people, to provide for their needs. And what's really amazing in that story is right there at the end, because everyone was supposed to take enough for the members of their household for that day, no more, except for on the, when the Sabbath was coming, maybe it took for two days. But it says everyone had exactly what they needed. No one had any left over and no one was left hungry. Everyone had what they needed. Amazing. Jesus, when we get into the Gospel of John, he has all of these different I am statements. I am the door. I am the gate. I am the bread of life. He talks to people that he's going to feed them and sustain them. And he specifically goes back to the, the manna that came when God provided for Israel. The bread that rained down from heaven it wasn't from Moses, he says. It was from God. And it was provided to sustain the people, but I am the bread of life. Jesus has come to sustain his people, to feed us with exactly what we need. And there's a lot of debates, of course, on John 6, is it speaking about the Lord's Supper or not? And all those kinds of questions come up. Certainly it is speaking about the Lord's Supper, but much more than that. It's talking about Jesus himself. What has he come to do for us? Well, certainly he's come to, to live the perfect life, to lay that life down, to suffer, die, and rise again 
in order that we would have forgiveness and life in his name. But he continues to feed and sustain us as he, as he brings us into the faith. He provides us with his very word, the word through which the spirit works and brings us into the faith and encourages us in the faith. He works through holy baptism, bringing us into the faith, forgiving sins. He works through the Lord's Supper, where his body and blood are, are truly present in, with, and under the elements of bread and wine. What is it that we need? What is it that we want God to provide for us? Well, if we're like Israel, we probably have a whole long list of things. And whatever is currently bothering us is the thing we want God to provide. Why, God, did you bring me here to Mechanicsville, to St. Paul Lutheran Church, just for this mess that I'm in? Why am I having to go through this in my life right now? And what we find is Jesus has come. But no matter what we're enduring, whatever kind of troubles or blessings or, or things that are going on in our life that we are going through right now, he's truly present here with us, sending his spirit to, to guard and protect us, sending his angels to do the same, coming to us through the elements that he has promised of word and sacrament, his chosen means of grace to feed and sustain our faith. When you think of nothing that was short for the people of Israel, that's really what he's doing for us as well, isn't it? Think for a moment about the feeding of the 5,000. There's actually a surplus that was there. He started out with a few fish and a few loaves and went around and fed everyone and ended up in baskets after everyone had eaten with more than what they started with. And that's another reminder for us of just how much grace does God have for us? How much is he showering down upon us? Well, if you think in terms of, of Exodus and the manna, it's exactly what we need. It's sufficient for whatever that need might be in our life, whether it's for, for food or for daily care or assurance and forgiveness that we need. It's everything that we need. And yet we still grumble, don't we? Lord, why don't I have? Lord, why is this happening to me? Lord, this isn't right. This isn't fair. Why did you bring me here for this? And the Lord says, I have what you need. Come to me. Receive from me. Here, take it. My word, my sacrament. This is what you need in order to get through this life. And he hasn't promised us exactly how long this life is going to be, but he has assured us that we have a Savior. We have a Savior in Jesus Christ our Lord, and through faith in Him, no matter how long or short our life might be, no matter how, how blessed or troubled our life might be, through faith in Jesus Christ, we have forgiveness and life assured in His name, because Jesus is the very bread of life, the one who comes to us, brings us into His kingdom sustains us in the faith, and brings us into life eternal with him. Tonight he's calling us once again to, to look at the blessings of God, how God cared for Israel in the wilderness, providing for the needs that they had, even when they were grumbling against him, how he provides for our needs with word and sacrament, offering forgiveness and life, even as we often grumble and complain. But he calls us to repentance, and he calls us to faith, and he assures us that through his suffering, death, and resurrection, we have everything that we need for this life and on into life eternal.
in the name of Jesus, the very uh, bread of life. Amen. And we rise. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope. We confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last and for our catechetical instruction tonight, we're looking at the sixth and seventh petitions of the Lord's Prayer. What is the sixth petition of the Lord's Prayer? And lead us not into temptation. What does this mean? God tempts no one. We pray in this petition that God would guard and keep us so that the devil, the world, and our sinful nature may not deceive us or mislead us into false belief, despair, and other great shame and vice. Although we are attacked by these things, we pray that we may finally overcome them and win the victory. What is the seventh petition of the Lord's Prayer? But deliver us from evil. What does this mean? We pray in this petition, in summary, that our Father in heaven would rescue us from every evil of body and soul, possessions and reputation, and finally, when our last hour comes, give us a blessed end, and graciously take us from this valley of sorrow to himself in heaven. Please rise. Gracious God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for blessing us with the opportunity to meditate again on the cross of Christ and receive your promised treasures. Lead us to see that our sins caused Jesus great agony in the garden 
that our sins nailed him to the cross of Calvary. And he was forsaken by his Father, so that we might never be forsaken. And that he died, so that we may live. Lord Jesus, grant that especially during this sacred season, the treasured story of your wondrous love for us would draw us closer to you. Enable us to savor you as we do the bread of life. Tell us in that you forgive us, renew us, satisfy us, and give our lives to you. Holy Spirit, lift up troubled souls everywhere. Grant wholeness to those hurting in heart, body, and mind. Work your healing power in the lives of those in need. Especially this night, we pray that you would be with Daniel, Mark, Kevin, Eleanor, Patricia, Judy, and Meredith. With Cheyenne, Diane, Jean, Liz, Diane, Doris, Lewis, Helen, Terry, Ruth, Nancy, Christine, Paul, Mary, Faye, Frank, and Gwen, Jackson, and Butch. With Avery, Bill, Anita, Carter, Ryan, Scott, Faye, Eleanor, Sydney, Todd, Cindy, Buddy, and Cindy. With Thelma, Glyna, Mickey, Sherry, Tommy, Chris, Tony, Elsie, Michelle, April, Jeff, Carol, Lucille, Paul, Billy, Tammy, Christy, and Bill. And be in the lives of all that we name in our hearts before you now. All glory, honor, and praise be to you with the Father and the Son, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins, for I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things, let your holy angel be with me, that the evil of God may have no power over me. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord.